Welcome back everyone, I'm Jordan Giesegi, and this is The Limiting Factor. A patent application for Tesla's lithium clay plus salt extraction process has just been published by the U.S. Patent Office, and it gives some excellent insights into how Tesla intends to extract lithium from clay. Today we're going to look at the key points of the patent and how it fits with the lithium clay and salt extraction process I outlined a few months ago. In that video, I highlighted that Tesla has some of the best engineers in the world, and they might develop a novel process that neither I nor the rest of the mining industry has thought of. Tesla's delivered with a high-energy milling process to crack lithium out of the clay. High-energy milling should be lower cost and less toxic than the super-high temperature roasting and sulfuric acid leaching processes that other clay startups are trialing. Before we begin, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. This is the support that gives me the freedom to avoid chasing the algorithm and sponsors, and I hope will eventually allow me to do this full time. As always, the links for support are in the description. Tesla filed the patent application titled Selective Extraction of Lithium from Clay Minerals on the 29th of December 2020. The patent application was published on the 8th of July 2021 and the inventors were G1 Sun, Julia Chun, Turner Caldwell, and Anthony Thurston. I've marked on screen the approximate year they started on the materials team at Tesla. My guess is that this team formed to tackle lithium clay extraction in 2018 or 2019, and they've been building the team since. Then, sometime in early 2020, they landed on a promising extraction process which Elon announced on Battery Day in September 2020. In the subsequent months, the team pulled together the patent application and submitted it in December 2020. The key takeaway with that timeline for me is that it only took the team a year or two to find a new way to extract the lithium from clay. This is impressive because most other lithium clay startups appear to be using processes that require acid or heat, which, as we'll soon see, have severe drawbacks. Tesla is cutting their own path with a first principles solution and rapid development. There's no way to know whether Tesla will actually use the process suggested in the patent. However, the fact that Elon commented on the patent on Twitter means it's very high likelihood. It looks like Elon wasn't bluffing on Battery Day when he said that Tesla's getting into lithium mining. Let's start by breaking down the title of the patent, Selective Extraction of Lithium from Clay Minerals. To understand what this means, let's take a look at the atomic structure of clay. Clay is composed of two layers, a framework layer and an interlayer. The framework layer is a solid crystal that can be composed of lithium, potassium, aluminum, calcium, and more. The interlayer is the space between the crystals and can contain lithium, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. That is, both the framework layer and the interlayer can contain lithium. Regardless of whether the lithium is held in the interlayer or the framework layer, it's usually less than 1% by weight of the clay, which gives us two broad strategies for extraction. First, jailbreak the lithium from the framework layer, which requires a large amount of energy because the framework layer is a crystal and the lithium is chemically bonded. The second option is to force the lithium out of the interlayer, which requires less energy because the lithium is held in place by electrostatic forces rather than chemical bonds. Typically, lithium clays hold the lithium in the framework layer rather than the interlayer. Lithium clay startups have proposed two ways to liberate the lithium from the framework layer, heat and acid. We'll look at just one of the processes today, because they're both expensive and very blunt tools for extracting lithium from clay. In this flow sheet, I've highlighted acid leaching. Sulfuric acid is a brutal acid that's powerful enough to disintegrate the clay crystal structure. Leaching means soaking the clay in liquid to release ions from the clay into solution. So, an acid leach basically disintegrates the clay into a soup of ions in solution. The amount of sulfuric acid required here is massive, which drives up cost. Besides the cost, acid leaching has two other negative side effects. First, the acid disintegrates the crystal structure, releasing impurities along with the lithium. This means it's a non-selective process because it doesn't select for lithium ions. It releases most types of ions in the crystal structure. Second, 
the sulfuric acid and clay soup has to be neutralized before being returned to the natural environment, which likely increases the environmental and regulatory headaches involved in building a mine. Next, let's look at extracting lithium from the interlayer. In the lithium mine video, my preferred option was that Tesla could use a cation exchange process to knock the lithium out of the interlayer. A cation is a positive ion. For example, table salt is sodium chloride, or NaCl. The sodium is positive, which is the cation, and the chloride is negative, which is the anion. The most basic cation exchange process would involve mixing a salt, such as sodium chloride, with water and the clay. The lithium in the interlayer has a stronger attraction to water than the sodium in the table salt. This means that under the right conditions, some of the lithium from the sodium chloride might swap places with the lithium, releasing the lithium into the solution. This is a selective process because it specifically targets lithium and doesn't destroy the clay crystal structure, which limits impurities, which reduces production costs. Furthermore, if water and salt are used instead of acid, it should be easier to return the clay to the natural environment. Despite the benefits, I pointed out two issues with cation exchange. First, clays that hold the majority of their lithium in the interlayer are more difficult to find. Tesla would have to find a magic clay deposit to make this work. Second, the cation exchange process would be slow and would need an accelerant, such as a small amount of acid. Tesla's patent application doesn't specify whether they're cracking the lithium out of the framework layer or pushing it out of the interlayer, but I think we can piece it together. First, throughout the application, Tesla compares their process directly to a conventional, non-selective sulfuric acid process that attacks the framework layer. I can only assume that Tesla used the same clay to test their process as well meaning that Tesla's process is intended for clays that hold their lithium in the framework layer. Second, Tesla mentions ion exchange throughout the patent application. For example, in these formulas, Tesla shows their process can use not only sodium from table salt as the cation, it can also use magnesium from something like magnesium chloride. The formulas clearly show cation exchange, where the lithium and sodium, or lithium and magnesium, swap places. Magnesium does extract slightly more lithium from the clay than sodium, but there are two drawbacks. First, magnesium chloride is about twice as expensive as sodium chloride. Second, magnesium chloride pushes more impurities out of the clay crystal, such as calcium and chromium so it doesn't select for lithium as well as sodium chloride does. Let's pause for an interim summary to emphasize what Tesla's patent is describing and why it's a big deal. Tesla appears to have found a way to selectively extract lithium from the framework layer of the lithium clay without destroying the clay crystal. This allows them to avoid using toxic sulfuric acid and should result in a low-cost, environmentally friendly, pure product. Most of the western United States has vast amounts of lithium clay, and most of those clays hold their lithium in the framework layer, meaning Tesla doesn't need to find a magic cation exchangeable clay. They can make any lithium clay do cation exchange. Before we look closer at how Tesla's doing this, it's worth noting that the patent application covers less than half of the full lithium production process. With that said, it covers the most critical part of the lithium production process, which is separating the lithium from the clay. I say it's the most critical because separating the lithium from the clay is the most technically challenging part of the process and requires the most energy. With that in mind, let's take a look at the flow sheets for Tesla's process and then the results. In the patent application, the inventors suggest four different paths to extracting lithium from clay. All four use clay, water, and salt, as Elon suggested at Battery Day. But we now have the missing piece of the puzzle. Each process also uses high-energy milling. What's high-energy milling? There are a number of different types of high-energy milling, but their purpose is the same, which is to apply the maximum amount of energy into a material to change its chemistry and structure. This is called mechanochemistry. Mechanochemistry is a super niche type of chemistry that's languished in obscurity because it doesn't use the same equations as regular chemistry. 
In other words, it's no wonder that most of the major lithium players haven't used this approach for lithium clays. They clearly had the tools, such as ball mills, which have been used for crushing and grinding for decades. However, it's another thing to have the knowledge and skill set to understand that a ball mill can not only turn rocks into powder, they can also change the chemical structure of the powder. Despite being a niche area of study, the equipment for mechanochemistry is widely available and it's an efficient way to alter the shape, size, and chemistry of materials in bulk and at low cost. The type of high energy mill that Tesla used is broadly called a ball mill because the kinetic energy of dense balls are used to apply energy to other materials within the mill. There are several types of high energy mills that use balls. In the patent application, it specifies a planetary ball mill. Planetary ball mills are very high energy because they use high speeds and centrifugal force to exert impact, shearing, and friction forces. This is where all the magic happens in Tesla's lithium clay extraction process. The high energy mechanical action reduces the clay particulate size, deforms the clay crystal structure, and drives chemical changes. Unlike the sulfuric acid process, which disintegrates the clay crystal structure using chemical energy, high energy milling uses mechanical energy that leaves the clay crystal structure relatively intact. The clay particles are smaller and deformed, but still essentially clay. The structural changes driven by the high energy ball milling allow the saltwater solution to act on the lithium and the clay crystals and selectively draw out just the lithium ions through cation exchange. It's worth noting that the particular order that the salt, water, clay, and high energy milling occurred had little impact on the extraction efficiency in Tesla's patent application. The graph in 5A shows the lithium extraction efficiency on the y-axis and the mill time on the x-axis. The solid line indicates that the table salt was added in the leach, and the dashed line indicates that the table salt was added in the high energy mill. As you can see, the amount of lithium extracted from the clay varies depending on the mill time. But, on average, adding table salt to the leach improves the lithium extraction efficiency by about 7%. The patent application doesn't explain why this is, but my guess is that when salt is added to the mill stage, it absorbs energy from the ball milling that would otherwise be applied to the clay. Adding salt with water in the leach actually fits with my analysis from the lithium clay mine video, which I highly recommend watching if you enjoy this video. In that video, I suggested that after the lithium has been removed from the leach solution, the salt water could be pumped directly back to the leach tank and reused for the next batch of clay. This would also fit with Elon's claim at Battery Day that all the elements in their lithium clay extraction process are reusable. Finally, how does Tesla's selective lithium extraction process compare to a non-selective process? Figure 4 shows the non-selective process in black compared to Tesla's process in turquoise and pink. In the non-selective leach process, 38 grams of clay material was mixed with 113 grams of sulfuric acid to form a slurry. The slurry was leached at 65 degrees Celsius for 2 hours. The result was a high extraction rate of about 85% but also large amounts of aluminum, calcium, magnesium, and iron, which are all impurities that will need to be removed later in the process. In the selective extraction process in turquoise, 40 grams of clay material and 4 grams of table salt were added to a high-energy mill for 2 hours at 500 RPM. Only 50% of the lithium has been liberated at this point, but there is another step yet to go. Additionally, we can already see a massive reduction in impurities. As a side note, this would have been a dry powder, so I'm not sure how Tesla analyzed the sample for ions, but I'm assuming they just mixed it with cold water. Finally, in the selective leach process in pink, 33 grams of the milled mixture from the selective extraction process in turquoise was added into 117 grams of water to form a slurry and leached at 65 degrees Celsius for two hours. In other words, this leach step uses the water and heat to liberate further lithium from the dry milled powder created in the last step. 65 Celsius is the same temperature that was used for the sulfuric acid leach, which means 65 degrees was chosen to create an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. 
It may not be the optimal temperature, and Tesla might be able to extract more lithium with a higher temperature. Regardless, the selective leach process increased the process efficiency to 70%, and we see further reductions in the impurities. I couldn't find any explanation in the patent as to why the hot water leach process reduced the impurities. I can only guess that the ions reacted with something in the mixture and left the ionic state. If I've missed something in the patent, or if my reasoning is faulty here, let me know in the comments below. As I said earlier in the video, the patent only covered the first few steps of the lithium production process. The leach solution containing the lithium would start at 70% extraction efficiency, but would reduce as the leach solution was clarified. The lithium was separated from the leach solution and then converted into lithium hydroxide or carbonate. However, we also have to take into account that the patent is showing an unoptimized process, and Tesla will likely be able to increase the extraction efficiency well beyond 70%. The end-to-end -end extraction efficiency from hard rock and brine sources of lithium to finished product are 40 to 60 percent, and I don't see any reason why Tesla couldn't match that range. Though, ultimately, what matters is total production costs, which I think Tesla's selective process can deliver. Let's compare Tesla's selective extraction process to a hard rock process using a lithium-containing spodumene ore. The rocks are blasted from a rock face, then moved with heavy equipment, milled and crushed, separated in a float tank, dried and heated to between 500 and 1000 Celsius, and then soaked in a sulfuric acid leach solution. Compare that with Tesla's process. Dig up some clay, grind it in a ball mill for several hours, add salt and hot water. Done. Spodumene does contain several times more lithium on a weight basis than lithium clay at 1 to 2 percent versus 0.3 to 0.5 percent, but Tesla's process is using a fraction of the energy and chemicals. The only concern I have here about what I've seen of Tesla's process so far is that they used a bench scale planetary ball mill. I haven't seen a planetary ball mill larger than bench scale, and I'm assuming they aren't easy to scale because of the massive centrifugal forces that would be generated by a larger machine. With that said, I don't see why Tesla couldn't use a standard ball mill that uses gravity to exert impact, shearing, and friction forces. Regular ball milling would take longer, but it's still considered high energy. And it's an efficient bulk process that can process hundreds of thousands of tons of material per year. Let's wrap things up. In my two previous videos on Tesla's lithium clay extraction process, it became clear to me that what Tesla is proposing isn't science fiction, but in fact very doable. The question that remained for me was exactly how Tesla would separate the lithium from the clay at low cost and high volume. This patent application answered that question for me. I haven't seen any other lithium extraction process that's as rapid and has such low energy and chemical requirements for the first few stages of production. The high energy ball milling process also has positive knock-on effects for the rest of the production line. First, it provides a leach solution that contains fewer impurities. It's difficult to emphasize how important this is. Even a fraction of a percent of impurity in the final product can render a batch of lithium hydroxide unusable for batteries. If some of the metallic impurities aren't in the leach solution in the first place, it makes purification that much easier. Second, I haven't seen another process that may allow returning the clay to the natural environment with minimal processing. This will, I hope, make the permitting for Tesla's mine less arduous. This brings us to an important point. Permitting, regulatory hurdles, and environmental assessments often take many years. According to Benchmark Minerals, a mine usually takes a minimum of five years to start production. Based on that, I'll stick with the estimate I gave in previous videos of a start date of production for Tesla's lithium mine in 2025 at the earliest. I'll also reiterate my statement that we don't need subsidies for electric vehicles. Demand is already too high for Tesla to meet. What we need is for red tape to be cut for raw materials and a national initiative to source them from North America. This is starting to get some attention now, and I expect the pressure will continue to build in the next few years. 
As to what the actual production cost will be for Tesla's lithium, it's difficult to know, other than to say that Tesla's process looks promising and may allow them to at least reach production cost parity with external suppliers. This would mean Tesla could avoid the middleman costs and get their lithium more cheaply. With that said, the cost savings is only a small part of why Tesla wants to get into lithium mining. The primary reason is to increase the supply of lithium available to Tesla, giving the company more control over its supply chain and destiny. In the lithium mine video, I also put the odds of Tesla starting a lithium mine at 70%. For me, this patent application bumps that up to an 80% chance. There's no science to this, it's just my gut feel based on everything that could happen with technology, supply chains, and permitting. Will Tesla be granted a patent for the selective lithium extraction process? It may not receive a patent grant, but I'm not concerned about this. The patent reviewer noted that the process isn't novel, which makes gaining a patent more difficult. For what it's worth, I'd argue that's not the case. I reviewed the research papers that the reviewer cited. They did use high-energy mills, but they were either applying it to rock or using sulfuric acid, neither of which Tesla is doing. Why am I not concerned? The Tablas Electrode patent hasn't received a patent grant yet, but Tesla still progressed manufacturing of the 4680 cell. How can this be? My understanding is that a patent just grants exclusive rights and the ability to monetize the patent through licensing. As long as Tesla isn't infringing on another patent, they should be able to operate without a patent. As far as I can tell, Tesla isn't infringing on other patents. If you know something about patents and my understanding is incorrect, let me know in the comments below. So what's next for the lithium clay mine? Now that we have the selective lithium extraction patent and a general understanding of Tesla's process, most of my technical concerns are gone and it's more about access and regulation. I'm looking for proof that Tesla has access to a lithium clay mine either through direct purchase, partnership, or acquisition. Then I'm looking for permitting applications. On that note, reading between the lines in the patent application, Tesla clearly has access to lithium clay. This could be taken as a good sign. If Tesla already has lithium clay, it may follow that they have their own lithium clay deposit, or at least access to a lithium clay deposit. As always, I'll keep my eyes peeled and make a video if something significant shows up on my radar. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon with the link at the end of the video. I'm also active on Twitter. You can find the details in the description, and I look forward to hearing from you. A special thanks to the generous support of my YouTube members and all the other patrons listed in the credits. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for tuning in.